about battles in the ancient cities of Sparta and Troy, and about the legendary tales of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Did you know that evidence suggests those battles and tales were not part of the ancient Greek Empire, but a previous civilization called the Mycenaean? The Mycenaean civilization was the first advanced Greek civilization, speaking and writing the Greek language. They ruled most of Greece from about the 17th to 12th centuries BCE. They eventually took over the island of Crete from the Minoan civilization. The Mycenaeans had a strict hierarchy of social classes. The ruler of the Mycenaeans was called the Wenax, literally the king or ruler, who was in charge of typical king-like roles, such as making laws and determining tax amounts. Since the Mycenaean religion was part of the government, the Wenax was also associated with the religion and probably performed some ceremonial roles. The Telestai, according to some researchers, were probably religious leaders who were in charge of the religious rituals, ceremonies, and offerings. Others think the Telestai might have just been influential landowners. Although it makes sense that these leaders worked in the palace, the palace was also home to artisans. The artisans were the craftsmen who made things like armor, pottery, and weapons. They were supplied with materials by the administrators of the kingdom and would be commissioned to create products that were needed for the military or common people. They also made luxury items. The Mycenaeans notoriously liked to fight, so it made sense that they had a military leader who was high up on the hierarchy. The leader was called the Lawagidas. The Lawagidas was the second highest person in the kingdom that was probably in charge of leading the military, though some researchers think he was just a prince. Being in charge of the army, the Lawagidas led the Hecatae. The Hecatae were a separate warrior class that were typically cavalry, who would ride horses or small chariots into battle, unlike the lower-class foot soldiers. Somewhere in the middle of the social hierarchy were the workers or laborers. It's unclear how the workers functioned and how they were perceived in this hierarchy, but they were the people who ran the important parts of the society. Workers were typically farmers, builders, Introduction. The Mycenaean civilization, spanning from approximately 1600 BCE to 1100 BCE, holds a pivotal place in the annals of ancient Greek history. Named after the prominent archaeological site of Mycenae, this civilization emerged as a dominant force on the Peloponnese Peninsula, leaving behind a rich legacy that has fascinated historians, archaeologists, and enthusiasts for centuries. In this article, we delve into the key aspects of the Mycenaean civilization, exploring its rise, achievements, culture, and eventual decline. Prior to the emergence of the Mycenaeans, the most significant group of people occupying what would later be Greek lands were the Minoans. The Minoans lived on the island of Crete in the Aegean Sea south of the Greek mainland. Their largest city was Knossos. The Minoans were renowned throughout the Mediterranean area as traders. They produced beautiful pottery and wall paintings. Exactly what caused the collapse of the Minoan civilization around 1200 BCE is unknown. What is known is that the Mycenaeans overran Crete and most of southern Greece by around 1400 BCE. They absorbed and adapted much of the Minoan culture, including language, religion, and art. The Mycenaean civilization became the dominant power throughout the Greek world, reaching its peak, 1500-1300 BCE. The name Mycenaean. The people now known as the Mycenaeans did not call themselves by that name. They were known in antiquity as the Achaeans. They live on in memory because of the two epic poems by Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey, which described their exploits in the Trojan War. Although historians had known of the existence of the ruins of Mycenae for centuries, little archaeological work had been done there. Historians generally believe that Homer's stories of the Mycenaeans and the Trojan War and its aftermath were fictional. In the 1870s, a German self-made millionaire, Heinrich Schleimann, became convinced that the ruins of Hizarlik in Turkey were actually the ruins of Homer's Troy and that all the events described in Homer's epics were true. 
he began excavations at the site and located evidence that the site is indeed the location of an ancient city once known as Troy. Schliemann next turned his attention to the hitherto neglected ruins at Mycenae, which he believed to be the capital of Agamemnon, legendary leader of the Achaeans in the Iliad. In 1876, he began his explorations at the site. What he discovered was that the ruins were those of a magnificent fortified city. Schliemann's discoveries at Mycenae renewed archaeological interest in the ancient civilization, which now came to be known as the Mycenaeans. Excavations at the site indicate a complex of many buildings, including the equivalent of a palace at the center. There are also numerous grave sites for royalty. The graves contained extensive grave goods, including a gold mask that Schliemann believed to be the death mask of Agamemnon. The Mycenaeans were influenced by the earlier Minoan civilization, 2000 to 1450 BCE, which had spread from its origins at Knossos, Crete, to include the wider Aegean. Architecture, art, and religious practices were assimilated and adapted to better express the perhaps more militaristic and austere Mycenaean culture. The Mycenaeans came to dominate most of mainland Greece and several islands, extending trade relations to other Bronze Age cultures in such places as Cyprus, the Levant, and Egypt. The culture made a lasting impression on later Greeks in the archaic and classical periods, most tangibly in their myths of Bronze Age heroes like Achilles and Odysseus and their exploits in the Trojan War. It is an era of great might and splendor. Fierce warriors and great kings inspired Homer to write his epic poems, Iliad and Odyssey. Iliad describes in great poetic narrative the feats of the Trojan War, the siege and conquest of the great city of Troy by the assembled Greek armies. In Odyssey, the poet gives a lyrical account of the adventurous return of Odysseus to his homeland Ithaca after the war. The Mycenaean civilization dating back to the late Bronze Age, 1600 or 1100 BCE, it represents the first advanced and distinctively Greek civilization in mainland Greece with its palatial states, urban organization, was a major cultural and political force in ancient Greece. Stimulated by their contact with insular Minoan Crete and other Mediterranean cultures to develop a more sophisticated socio-political culture of their own. The most prominent site was Mycenae, after which the culture of this era is named. Other centers of power that emerged included Pylos, Tyrans, and Medea in the Peloponnese, Orchomenos, Thebes, and Athens in central Greece, and Iolcos in Thessaly, where once stood a great Mycenaean fortified palace. Mycenae is celebrated by Homer as the seat of King Agamemnon, who led the Greeks in the Trojan War. In modern archaeology, the site first gained renown through Heinrich Schliemann's excavations in the mid-1870s, which brought to light objects whose opulence and antiquity seemed to correspond to Homer's description of Agamemnon's palace. The extraordinary material wealth deposited in the shaft graves at Mycenae, CRG of 1550 BC, attests to a powerful elite society that flourished in the subsequent four centuries. Mycenaean settlements also appeared in Epirus, Macedonia, on islands in the Aegean Sea, on the southwest coast of Asia Minor, and on Cyprus, while Mycenaean-influenced settlements appeared in the Levant and Italy. The Mycenaeans developed a sophisticated society characterized by impressive palaces, intricate artwork, and a warrior-based culture. They traded extensively with other Mediterranean civilizations and were renowned for their skilled craftsmanship in pottery, metalwork, and architecture. The Mycenaeans are also known for their written language, Linear B, which was deciphered in the 1950s, shedding light on their administrative and religious practices. However, around 1200 BCE, the Mycenaean civilization experienced a sudden decline, often attributed to a combination of internal factors and external invasions. 
The fall of Mycenae marked the end of the Bronze Age in Greece and paved the way for the subsequent Dark Ages. Despite its relatively short existence, the Mycenaean civilization left a lasting legacy on Greek culture and set the stage for the rise of classical Greece. The Mycenaeans were influenced by the earlier Minoan civilization, 2000-1450 BCE, which had spread from its origins at Knossos, Crete, to include the wider Aegean. Architecture, art, and religious practices were assimilated and adapted to better express the perhaps more militaristic and austere Mycenaean culture. The Mycenaeans came to dominate most of mainland Greece and several islands, extending trade relations to other Bronze Age cultures in such places as Cyprus, the Levant, and Egypt. The culture made a lasting impression on later Greeks in the archaic and classical periods, most tangibly in their myths of Bronze Age heroes like Achilles and Odysseus and their exploits in the Trojan War. Major Mycenaean Centers Major Mycenaean centers included Mycenae, traditional home of Agamemnon, Tyrans, perhaps the oldest center, Pylos, traditional home of Nestor, Thebes, Medea, Gla, Orchomenos, Argos, Sparta, Nicaea, and probably Athens. In time, the Mycenaeans would even establish themselves on Crete and especially at Knossos, thus superseding the Minoans as the dominant culture in the southern Aegean by the second half of the 15th century B. The largest city, although not a capital city in any sense, epicenter of power was Mycenae, located in the northeastern part of the Peloponnese, was a major center of Mycenaean power. The city was fortified with impressive Cyclopean walls, so named due to the belief that only the mythical Cyclops could have constructed such massive structures. The Lion Gate, adorned with a relief of two lions, stands as a testament to the advanced architectural and artistic skills of the Mycenaeans. The Palaces, built by giants to shelter heroes. During the Mycenaean period, the Greek mainland enjoyed an era of prosperity centered in such strongholds as the city-states of Mycenae, Tyrans, Thebes, and Athens. The Palace of Mycenae, situated on the top of a hill, overlooks from an advantage point the Argive Plain and its surrounding area. Neolithic settlers first inhabited it in the third millennium. The heyday of the Mycenaean civilization came in 1400-1200 BC, and the most representative structure of its acme is the huge limestone fortification walls, usually referred to as the Cyclopean Walls. The legend goes that the mythical giants, the Cyclopes, built the walls due to their formidable size. The main entrance of the Palace of Mycenae features the most distinctive surviving feature of the Mycenaean grandeur, the Lion Gate, built around 1260 BC. The Lion Gate guards and provides the main access to the fortress. The two lions positioned symmetrically around a column is the first example of emblematic and representational monumental sculpture in Europe. The lions clearly symbolize the power of the Mycenaean state and the unconquerable features of its architecture. The triangular shape of the sculpture supports the arch of the gate as it distributes the weight above the door to the sides and away from the horizontal beam. Built on an impressive citadel and hill over 278 meters, 912 fairfafs, above sea level, where there are remains of large palace buildings and hundreds of tombs and shaft graves, including nine large stone Tholos tombs, 1600-1300 BCE. Other impressive remains include sections of the fortification walls and the famous Lion Gate, 1250 BCE, with its heraldic pair of lions above the entrance, beyond trading relations. The exact political relationship between the over 100 Mycenaean centers spread across Greece is not clear. It is not even clear what the relationship was between a single palace and its surrounding population, as the former seems to have specialized in the manufacture of luxury goods and the latter in foodstuffs, some of which were then stored in the palace.
The Palace of Tyrans, located on the fertile Argolis Plain, Tyrans lies between Naphtlion and Argos in the eastern Peloponnese in Greece. The site has been inhabited since the Neolithic Age, 7th-4th millennium BC, but reached its greatest period of importance in the 13th century BC as a major center of the Mycenaean culture and aided by its position, at that time just one kilometers from the coast, it was an important Mediterranean Bronze Age port. Tiryns, along with nearby Mycenae, is on the list of UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. The Cyclopean fortification that surrounds the palace is clearly equivalent to the one in Mycenae. These palaces, such as the Palace of Knossos in Crete and the Palace of Pylos in mainland Greece, were characterized by their opulent architecture and complex floor plans. The palaces housed the ruling elite, stored valuable goods, and hosted religious rituals. The Mycenaean palaces were important symbols of power and wealth. The Palace of Thebes, known as Cadmeo, named after King Cadmos, who built the palace that later became the home of the great Theban kings and their powerful hegemony during the Mycenaean era. Today, the modern town of Thebes stands right on top of the ancient city. Many ancient remains are visible next to new constructions, while few parts of its fortifications, built with big boulders on natural rock, stand as an eternal reminder of its glorious past. Thebes is situated 45 kilometers from the capital town of modern Boeotia, Livadia. Some of the most important historical sites in Thebes is the Mycenaean Era Palace, the Isminion Temple devoted to Apollo and the Cadmion Gates. The political relationship between a palace and its village or between different palaces is not known. Despite this lack of clarity, there were many shared cultural features across sites which makes the term Mycenaean culture a useful one. Such shared features include architecture, frescoes, pottery, jewelry, weaponry, and of course, the Greek language and writing in the form of Linear B, an adaptation of the Minoan Linear A. Mycenaean Architecture, the Megaron A large palace complex has been found at many of the Mycenaean centers. These complexes, whilst displaying some site-unique developments, display several important architectural features in common. The complexes were built around a large rectangular central hall, or Megaron. The Mycenaean Megaron was the precursor for the later archaic and classical temples of the Greek world and consisted of an entrance porch, a vestibule, and the hall itself. This was the heart of the palace and contained a large circular hearth, usually more than three mets, each at 9.8 frafer in diameter with four wooden columns supporting a hold ceiling or light well. It was also the throne room of the ruler or wanax. There is usually a second smaller hall, often called the Queen's Megaron. Many private apartments and additional areas set aside for administration, storage, and manufacturing. Rooms were richly decorated with fresco paintings on the walls and plaster painted floors. Regarding materials, Rooms in the palace were constructed with rubble fill and cross-beamed walls and then covered in plaster inside and limestone blocks outside. Columns and ceilings were usually of painted wood, sometimes with bronze additions. Cyclopean Walls The whole palace complex was surrounded by a fortification wall of large unworked blocks, termed Cyclopean as it was believed that only the giant Cyclopes could have moved such massive stones. Such walls could reach 13 meters, 42.6 feet in height, and be as much as 8 meters, 26 feet thick. They are seen best at Mycenae, Tiryns, and Thebes, and are in stark contrast to the unprotected palaces of Minoan Crete. Corbel Galleries arched corridors created by progressively overlapping stone blocks, circular stone tombs with corbelled roofs, and monumental doorways with massive stone lintels with relieving triangles are also common features of Mycenaean sites. 
Other Mycenaean architectural structures include terracing of agricultural lands, dams for flood management, particularly evident at Tierrens, and small bridges built from large, roughly hewn stone blocks, again, seemingly the work of the Cyclopes. In contrast to these labor-intensive structures, the non-elite of Mycenaean society lived in modest mud-brick houses which had stone foundations. The Mycenaean Greeks introduced several innovations in the fields of engineering, architecture, and military infrastructure, while trade over vast areas of the Mediterranean was essential for the Mycenaean economy. Their syllabic script, Linear B, offers the first written records of the Greek language, and their religion already included several deities that can also be found in the Olympic pantheon. Mycenaean Greece was dominated by a warrior elite society and consisted of a network of palace-centered states that developed rigid hierarchical, political, social, and economic systems. At the head of this society was the king, known as a wanax. The Bronze Age in mainland Greece is generally termed as the Helladic period by modern archaeologists, after Hellas, the Greek name for Greece. This period is divided into three subperiods: the Early Helladic (EH) period (c. 3200–2000 BC) was a time of prosperity with the use of metals and a growth in technology, economy, and social organization. The Middle Helladic (MH) period (c. 2000, 1700, 1675 BC, faced a slower pace of development, as well as the evolution of megaron type dwellings and cist grave burials. The last phase of Middle Helladic, the Middle Helladic III, c. 1750, 1675 BC, along with the Late Helladic, LH period, c. 1700 to 1675, 1050 BC, roughly coincide with Mycenaean Greece. Economic and Trade Networks The Mycenaeans were accomplished traders, engaging in extensive maritime commerce. The deciphering of Linear B tablets has revealed insights into their economic activities, showcasing a complex bureaucracy that managed production, distribution, and storage of goods. Mycenaean artifacts, such as pottery and precious metals, have been discovered at distant sites, indicating a far-reaching trade network. Mycenaean Trade That the Mycenaean civilization had trading contact with other Aegean cultures is evidenced by the presence of foreign goods in Mycenaean settlements such as gold, ivory, copper, and glass, and by the discovery of Mycenaean goods such as pottery in places as far afield as Egypt, Mesopotamia, the Levant, Anatolia, Sicily, and Cyprus. No doubt perishable goods such as olive oil, perfumed oil, and wine were also significant Mycenaean exports, but unfortunately, the paucity of surviving written records, limited to, for example, only around 70 linear B clay, tablets from a major site like Mycenae, means that more details on interregional trade are at present lacking. The Uluburan shipwreck, a 14th century BCE vessel discovered off the coast of Turkey, was carrying raw material trade goods such as copper and tin ingots, ivory and glass discs, and was likely on its way to workshops in Mycenaean Greece before it sank. Mycenaean Social Structure Whether Agamemnon actually existed and led an army to Troy from Mycenae is unknown. What is known is that the Mycenaeans were highly civilized, they left writings describing their society. The Minoans wrote in a language that is known as Linear A, which remains undeciphered by scholars to this day. The Mycenaeans adapted Linear A into a language form known as Linear B. Linear B writings tell historians much about Mycenaean society, and linguists today study Linear B as the prototype of the classical Greek language. The government of the Mycenaeans was highly structured, feudalistic, and male-dominated. Each city had its own governmental and social structure. At the top of society was the wanax, or king. 
the Wanax oversaw lawmaking and taxes, but his primary role was probably as a religious leader. The role of the Wanax was probably hereditary. Immediately beneath the Wanax was the Lawajetas, or leader of the people. The Lawajetas was the leader of the army, which made him very important in this militaristic society. He may have served in administrative roles also. Below the Wanax and the Lawagetas was a group known as the Telestas. These men were religious leaders and landowners. The Hequitai were the most important members of the army, the cavalry. Below all of these groups, all of whom were male, were the Demos and the Doeri. The Demos were the common people, probably tradesmen and artisans. The Doeri were slaves, most of whom were women. Many of the Doeri were probably captured by the Mycenaeans in military raids. Mycenaean art. In art, as expressed in fresco, pottery, and jewelry, the Minoan love of natural forms and flowing design was likewise adopted by the Mycenaean artisans, but with a tendency to more schematic and less lifelike representation. This new style would become the dominant one throughout the Mediterranean. Geometric designs were popular, as were decorative motifs such as spirals and rosettes. Pottery shapes are much like the Minoan with the notable additions of the goblet and the alabastron, squat jar, with a definite preference for large jars. Terracotta figurines of animals and especially standing female figures were popular, as were small sculptures in ivory, carved stone vessels, and intricate gold jewelry. Frescoes depicted plants, griffins, lions, bull leaping, battle scenes, warriors, chariots, figure of eight shields and boar hunts, a particularly popular Mycenaean activity, military prowess. Besides being bold traders, the Mycenaeans were fierce warriors and great engineers who designed and built remarkable bridges, fortification walls, and beehive-shaped tombs, all employing cyclopean masonry and elaborate drainage and irrigation systems. Their palatial centers, Mycenae rich in gold and sandy pylos, are immortalized in Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. Palace scribes employed a new script, Linear B, to record an early Greek language. In the Mycenaean palace at Pylos, the best preserved of its kind, Linear B tablets suggest that the king stood at the head of a highly organized feudal system. By the late 13th century BC, however, mainland Greece witnessed a wave of destruction and the decline of the Mycenaean sites, causing the withdrawal to more remote refuge settlements. Renowned for their military prowess, the Mycenaeans established a formidable presence in the Aegean region. The epic poems of Homer, the Iliad, and the Odyssey provide glimpses into their warrior culture. Mycenaean warriors, often depicted with elaborate armor and weapons, played a crucial role in the Trojan War, a legendary conflict immortalized in Greek mythology. Mycenaean Religion Little is known for certain regarding Mycenaean religious practices beyond the importance given to animal sacrifice, communal feasting, the pouring of libations and offerings of foodstuffs. The presence of double axe carvings and horns of consecration in art and architecture ray suggest strong links with the Minoan religion, although these symbols may have been adopted because of their political resonance. Architectural features such as sunken basins and fresco depictions of altars hint that the Megaron may have had a religious function. Many centers also had specific sanctuary sites for worship, usually close to the palace complex. It is clear that burial was an important ritual as evidenced by the presence of monumental Tholos tombs, prominent grave sites, and the quantity of precious objects which were buried with the dead, golden masks, diadems, jewelry, and ceremonial swords and daggers. The muses in mythical Greece were nine daughters of the god Zeus and the titaness Minamazani, the goddess of memory. They were eternally young maidens that influenced, protected, and inspired the arts. 
Each was the mentor and inspirer of an art form as follows Calliope, the muse of epic poetry, Clio, the muse of history, Erato, the muse of lyric poetry, Euterpe, the muse of music, Melpomene, the muse of tragedy, Polyhymnia, the muse of sacred poetry, Terpsichor, the muse of dance and chorus Thalia, the muse of comedy and idyllic poetry, Urania, the muse of astronomy. It was Homer who formed the character of the Greek nation. No poet has ever exercised a similar influence over his countrymen. Prophets, lawgivers, and sages have formed the character of other nations. It was reserved to a poet to form that of the Greeks. Arnold H. L. Heron, History of Antiquity, the Mycenaean wealth, gold treasures of the mythical king, luxury items such as carved gems, jewelry, vases and boxes, pyxis in precious metals, and decorative glass ornaments produced in local workshops, along with utilitarian objects of pottery and bronze for daily use. Contact with Minoan Crete played a decisive role in the shaping and development of Mycenaean culture, especially in the arts. Commerce and sea trading expeditions circulated Mycenaean goods throughout the Mediterranean world, from Spain through the Levant. Naval wreckages provide evidence primarily of vases, and their contents, oil, wine, and other commodities, were probably the chief objects of trade. Royal tombs around the palace, referred to by archaeologists as Grave Circle A and B, unearthed rich burials, findings of silver and gold. The tomb treasures evidence the preeminence of the Mycenaeans, especially the treasury of Atreus, a monumental tomb outside the Palace of Mycenae. Shaft graves also at Mycenae, 1550 BC, revealed extraordinary material wealth proof of a powerful elite society that flourished in the subsequent four centuries. The Mycenaeans formed a warlike society, bearing fundamental social differences to their precedents, the Minoans. Most of the Mycenaean treasures are housed at the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. Visit the site to glimpse at the splendor of era, depicting the power and wealth of the society. HTTPS www. Name Museum Green, Collection, Syllogy, Mica Nikon, Archaeo Titan. Gleaming gold's resistance in time made it an early favorite of Mycenaean nobles. Gold was naturally the first material to be looted by tomb robbers, which explains why the characteristic tholos and chamber tombs of the period have been mostly found stripped of their treasures. Besides, in times of economic instability or in the face of some danger, gold objects and jewelry were the first to be hidden away, either to protect them from theft or to be melted down and reuse the precious metal. Such is, unfortunately, the case of the famous treasures from the Acropolis of Mycenae and Tiryns. The mask depicts the imposing face of a bearded man. It is made of a gold sheet detailed in repoussé technique without altering the thickness of the metal. The mask covered the deceased's face and the two holes near the ears held the mask in place with twine. The same technique is applied in the wooden box. Pix is below, a unique item due to the wooden base that rarely survived from the Mycenaean period, but also because of the distinctive appeal of the scene depicted. The gold plates illustrate lions hunting a deer and an antelope in a background of palm trees, spirals, and bovine heads with prominent eyes that dominate the composition. The high aesthetics that characterize Mycenaean artisans are especially seen in the details, such as the combination of more than one color and decorative motifs in the same necklace, but is primarily reflected in examples of minor arts that approach perfection without alerting the untrained eye to the amount of effort required to achieve the result. Such is the case of the bone ornaments from Grave Circle A at Mycenae covered in an extremely thin gold foil. Damage to the gold foil on some of these allowed us to confirm that the exact same decorative motif had first been engraved into the bone, even though it was not intended to be visible. Technically, 
This likely facilitated the precise impression of the motif on the thin gold foil. It is certain that carving the bone took more time and demanded more skill than the engraving of the gold sheet. The findings in the below picture are all unearthed from Shaft Grave III, known as the Grave of the Women. It contained three female and two infant interments. The women covered in gold jewelry and wore massive gold diadems, while the infants were overlaid with gold foil. The deceased clothes or shrouds embroidered with a great number of gold small round button-like medallions and other gold cutout foils in various shapes with repoussé decoration. The jewelry included large pins in silver and gold with rock crystal heads or with gold ornaments and sheathing, a necklace of amber beads, gold earrings, hair ornaments, and gold seals engraved with hunting or dueling scenes. Miniature gold vessels, faience vessels, and gold scales were also found. The most characteristic Mycenaean ornament is the gold relief bead, either isolated or in necklaces. They are formed of two sheets of gold joined together so as to give the impression of a solid piece and imitate mainly flowers, rosettes, daisies, lilies, crocuses, fruits and sea creatures, argonauts, shells, etc. Complex techniques, such as casting in a mold, granulation, decoration with tiny gold spheres, and enamel, widely known today as cloisonné, gradually replaced the simpler methods of hammering, forging, and wire drawing. Some of these techniques were imported from the East, while others, such as the loop-in-loop -loop chain, which is found for the first time in Minoan Crete, or the relief gold bead, were developed in the Aegean. Complementing our fragmentary knowledge of the technology of the era are tools, molds or matrices and half-finished ornaments found in graves or palatial workshops. Moreover, the invisible seam, mainly occurring on gold necklaces, rings and earrings that are covered by fine granulation or tiny tacks, is further indisputable evidence of the dexterity and aesthetic sense that characterizes the Mycenaean goldsmith. Palace scribes employed a new script, Linear B, to record an early Greek language. In the Mycenaean palace at Pylos, the best-preserved Linear B tablets suggest that the king stood at the head of a highly organized feudal system, probably the first European feudocratic states. Linear B texts, first discovered early in the 20th century, were not published until 1952. In 1953, an English architect named Michael Ventris deciphered and interpreted the script as an early form of Greek. The Greek alphabet, as we know it today, developed over the next centuries and emerged in its final form during the 8th century BC. Decline and the End of the Mycenaean Civilization Mycenaean Greece perished with the collapse of Bronze Age culture in the Eastern Mediterranean to be followed by the Greek Dark Ages, a recordless transitional period leading to archaic Greece where significant shifts occurred from palace-centralized to decentralized forms of socio-economic organization, including the extensive use of iron. Various theories have been proposed for the end of this civilization, among them the Dorian invasion or activities connected to the Sea Peoples. Additional theories such as natural disasters and climatic changes have also been suggested. The Mycenaean period became the historical setting of much ancient Greek literature and mythology, including the Trojan epic cycle.